I want us to look at this rational function. <laughs> We're going to assume that all the conversations that happen between videos never happen. <laughs> now, when I look at this guy, he's set up as the, in that P of X over Q of X form. I want you to tell me everything you know about this guy. I'm going to start with the easy stuff. I don't, you got to start with the easy part. What is the y-intercept? You know the y-intercept is when x is 0, so figure that out. It's not that bad. It is negative one third. Negative one third. So zero negative one third. All right. Now your x-intercept. Your x-intercept comes from what makes that numerator equal to zero. What makes the numerator equal to zero? The numerator? Why are you screaming? Why are you screaming? Why are you giving me wrong answers? Negative one halves. Negative one halves or negative one half? Your vertical asymptote. <laughs> your vertical asymptote comes from what makes the denominator <laughs> equal to zero. <laughs> what makes the denominator <laughs> equal to zero? <laughs> Uh, compare the degrees. Is the denominator more dominant than the numerator? No. No, so your horizontal asymptote is not y equals 0. The degrees are the same, which means you do what? Wait, let me look back at my notes. Oh, A over B. So A over B is going to be what? Over, no, wait. Right. 2 over 1, which is just 2. two. Is this enough information for me to start working on the graph? I think so. so. Now what you may want to do is find some other points here by kind of completing a t-table. <laughs> so if I do that, <coughs> think about where some of your key points are, especially around your vertical asymptote. Around your vertical asymptote, I would pick numbers like 2 and I'd pick 4, just to get an idea about what's going on there. If I plug in x equals 2, what do you get? Go back up here to the original, what do you get? 5. I get 5 over negative 1, which gives me oh. negative 5. If I plug in 4, what do you get? 9, nine over nine. 1, so that's just 9. Yeah. Well, I think if I keep going out this <coughs> way, well, let's see what happens. If I plug in 5, what do you get? 11 over 2. If I plug in 6, let's do one more. 13 over 3, so I get 13 thirds. I'm going to take this information and let's go to the graph and see what we come up with. All right. So there, there's some information here that doesn't really help me out too much, and that's going to be the x and the y intercept because they're in weird places. I get 0 negative one-third, so that's somewhere right about here. My x-intercept is negative one-half, zero. Is that enough information for my graph? 
not even close. So my horizontal asymptote, y equals 2, your vertical asymptote is what? x equals 3. Are you allowed to cross that vertical asymptote? No. Well, and, and really for these, for the basic functions we see, we're probably not going to be graphing the horizontal asymptote either. Look at these key points that I found. I found 2, negative 5. So 2, negative 5. I want you to observe something about this. From this, x is 2, y is negative 5. That's, you know, that's, you're, you're, that's a very good question. These, this t table that I have right here corresponds directly with what I have for my original function. So those are the x and y coordinates because the coordinates for this point right here really are 2, negative 5. Because what I'm not doing here, Yvonne, is that I'm not, I, I don't have those key points that I can move around because this guy's been kind of weird. Because so why? Because it's not set up for me to be able to move the points. Because oh, okay. I can't see how I move up, down, left, or right from this because it's not set up the right way for me. But we didn't move the new origin, right? Well, I have this new origin. This is how you want to use the new origin. Whatever points you get on one side here, you can rotate about that. So here, this guy was to the left one and down seven units from that, right? Mm -hmm. If I go to the right one and up seven units, I get this point. Right. And you're going to see how that point has the coordinates of 4, 9. So you see there, is sti there still is that symmetry rotated about that um, intersection of the asymptotes. Like here, I've got 5 and 11 halves. So that means the ordered pair, not from this new guy, but from the original origin, the ordered pair is 5, 11 halves, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half. You've got 6 and 13 thirds. What, what in the world is 13 thirds? 4 and a third, so I'll go 6 and then 1, 2, 3, 4 and a third. Now I want you to see how these guys match up with what we already had or what we can get. So this guy is from this new origin. It's two to the right and up three and a half. Do you all agree? Go to the left two and down one, two, three and a half to get another point. This ordered pair right here from that new origin from the intersection is over three and up two and a third. If I go left three, one, two, three and down two and a third, already had that point, right? And that was my y-intercept. So you can keep going and get more points this way and finish out the graph. I'm just going to go ahead and take this time right now to go ahead and continue these points. So it should look something very similar to this. So that's what I have. Let's see if we get something that matches up with that. I guess if it's very close, I kind of got off a little bit here as I was going out to the to the left. If I plug in more points out here, I'd be able to get something that's a little bit more accurate. But everything else looks to be pretty much spot on. With your vertical asymptote and your horizontal asymptote. What do you guys think about that? Good enough for government work? Yeah. All right. <laughs>